Oh, the indignity. It's the Ham Radio Q&A Clip Show. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. If this is your first time joining us and you love interesting and informative ham radio videos, then click that subscribe button and ring the little bell to be notified when future videos are being released. So speaking of this channel, we've had some amazing growth over the last year. We've um, increased our subscriber base to well over 3,000 subscribers, and also viewership has greatly increased over the past year. So thank you so much for your support. And also, in creating this top 10 list, I've noticed a few trends. Number one, the most popular videos tend to be amateur radio lifestyle and also instructional videos. So I'm going to take that data that I've, I've went through over the past year and fine tune my offerings for the coming year. But if there's a certain video and topic that you'd love to see, please leave a comment below. I want to hear your suggestions. And also stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to talk a little bit about this guy right here. So number 10 on the list, Maidenhead Grid Square Locator. Grid squares, it's a common locator tool for VHF and UHF DXers and also those interested in weak signal modes like JT65 and FT8. But uh, this coming year, uh, the ARRL's new operating event are going to make grid squares even more valuable. This video will tell you what a grid square is and how it operates. Number nine, visiting the Mosinee Hill repeater site. Last fall, I took a trip with a few other hams to do some maintenance at a local repeater site. Ever wonder what goes on at one of these repeater sites? Well, this video dives into the equipments and workings at a repeater located in north central Wisconsin. Number eight, cold weather amateur radio. Living in a northern climate, our club's amateur radio activities don't stop when it gets cold outside. So if you're planning to provide communications in a cold weather activity or participating in the upcoming winter field day, you're certainly going to want to check this video out. Number seven, ARRL field day safety. The purpose of a field day is to set up a temporary station in a wild environment and make contacts. But this can bring about a certain amount of risk. This video helps you minimize those risks with safety tips in concerning items such as generators, lightning protection, and also, most importantly, the human element. Number six, amateur radio hidden transmitter finding. Well, it, this is a companion video to my popular tape measure beam antenna video. Our local club hit a transmitter and then we had to go find it. Fox hunting, it's a great way to spend a morning and I hope this video inspires you to want to do the same. Number five, Sending, e sending email via HF. Email, it's a common and ubiquitous form of communications, but if you aren't connected to the internet, say you're out in the wild or at sea, sending a message could be next to impossible. So if you're into emergency communications, you know, you'll wanna watch this video on how to use WinLink to send and receive email over the HF airwaves. Number four, why should you upgrade your amateur radio license? Every one of us in amateur radio started out as either a novice or a technician. Our request for personal growth and enrichments are the reasons why we chose to upgrade our amateur radio license. This video lists reasons why it might be a good idea, or maybe not, to upgrade to the next level. Number three, ARRL Field Day Wrap Up. Field Day, it's the largest amateur radio operating event in the world. Our local club, the Wisconsin Valley Radio Association has consistently participated in field day since 1935. Well, quite a few things have changed since those early days, but a lot has stayed the same, notably the camaraderie and spirit to put our best forward. This video highlights those efforts in making uh, field day 2017 a success. Number two, buying used amateur radio gear. Ham fest, you gotta love them. With the rising cost of new amateur radio equipment, buying used can be a great way to build a good amateur radio station. But how do you find that pig in the poke without being stuck with somebody else's problem? Well, this video will give you the, the tools and tips you need to, for landing a great deal. And then finally, my top video of the last year, number one, the tape measure Yagi beam antenna. As I alluded to in the hidden transmitter video, 
This was the top new video of 2017. With over 14,000 views and 163 shares, it was certainly also the most popular video of the past year. As one commenter put it, this video sets the bar with, of what an instructional video should be. In this video, I'll show you how to build an inexpensive two meter Yagi antenna out of a steel tape measure and some PVC tubing. The antenna is perfect for fox hunting or to use as a directional antenna for that public service activity. Well, there you have it, the top 10 videos for 2017. I hope your favorite made the list. But a little bit about this thing. Well, since uh, snow's all over the backyard and uh, the leaves are off the trees, I thought I'd set up a vertical antenna and do a little bit of wintertime DX. So what we've got here is the Wolf River Coils Silver Bullet 1000 uh, coil and a 102 inch whip. Well, uh, in the coming weeks, I'll have another video with a full report on this coil and antenna. Links to all of these videos can be found in the description below, but you can also click right over to the side of me uh, for the uh, Best of 2017 playlist where you can view all of these videos in order. Well, that's it for this year. I'm Michael, kb 9 vbr your host for Ham Radio Q&A. Have a great, happy new year, a prosperous 2018, and as always, 73.